Hi, my name is Janelle Hickman and I am at the STBB Claremont office. Today I'm going to be discussing usufructs, habitatio and uses. Usufructs, habitatio and uses are personal rights which are registered against the title deeds of the property. These rights entitle the users thereof to enjoy the property of another, even though ownership does not vest in the holder of that right. The owner of the property will be referred to as the bare dominium owner of the property which is subject to the personal servitude. Usufructs are by far the most comprehensive of the three and habitatio and uses have slight limitations on them, but more commonly usufructs are used and that's why I'll be discussing those. A usufruct is usually reserved for a surviving spouse in terms of a will in which the deceased spouse wishes to leave the property to his children but wishes to secure a place for his surviving spouse to live. The property is then transferred to the children as owners subject to the usufruct which is registered in favor of the surviving spouse. She therefore does not become an owner but her right is registered and is enforceable against all others including the owners. As usufructory, her responsibilities include day-to-day -day maintenance of the property as well as paying rates and taxes. However, the deceased often does not make provision for major expenses that can, be, that can become payable by his beneficiaries as the responsibility of insurance as well as major improvements on the property still lie with the bare dominium owners. This is not the only way to register a usufruct. This can also be done in terms of an agreement where a property is purchased subject to a usufruct. For example, should your parents be scaling down and wish to rather purchase the property in your names in order to reduce estate duty, you may purchase the property together subject to a usufruct in favor of your parents. This also saves on transfer duty as the value of the usufruct and the value of the bare dominium are, are rated separately for transfer duty purposes. The value of the usufruct is determined by referencing what we call life expectancy tables. These life expectancy tables give us a figure that we then use in a formula depending on the age of your parents as usufructs are generally reserved for the lifetime of the user. For example, on a 3 million rand property, a person who's going to be 70 at their next birthday, the value of the usufruct will be just over 1.9 million and the bare dominium being the balance between the market value and the usufruct is just over a million. This, the transfer duty calculations on this leads to a saving of almost 100,000 rand. It is, however, important to consult with a tax specialist or your attorney as there are other taxes which may become relevant depending on the circumstances. This includes capital gains tax, estate duty, donations tax and even your income tax. As mentioned, a usufruct is usually registered for the lifetime of a person but it can also be registered for a set amount of time. A usufruct then expires upon the death of the usufructory or by agreement between the parties. If the usufruct has been registered for the lifetime of a person and it is subsequently cancelled, the value of the usufruct as a date of cancellation is seen as an enhancement of the bare dominium owner's rights and will therefore again attract transfer duty. In summary, a usufruct is the right to use and enjoy another person's property, but there are many considerations to take into account. For more information, please visit our website at stbb.co.za.